Hello, my name is Jakub. Welcome during the second day of MSPO in Kielce. With me is John Chabalala, Acting Director of the Bruzier Group. And we are sitting in Bruzier 2 and 2 MRAP vehicle, well combat mate. Could you tell us something more about this platform? Brilliant, yes. Um, Bruzier 2 and 2 is a vehicle designed in South Africa. We designed the vehicle from scratch and the vehicle is designed to be able to meet operational requirements of armed forces around the world. Uh, its uh, predecessor was the Bruiser 112, which was lighter, smaller, and we have built the Bruiser 212 to meet today's operational requirements and challenges out in the world, and uh, that is why the vehicle is here. And we have then also partnered with uh, WB Group where they have also uh, uh, supplying subsystems to the vehicle, as you'd have seen. The combat turret on the vehicle, the uh, war mate, which is a loitering munition, and they have their communication system fitted on board. Now, this vehicle is designed to can come in a number of variants, be it section variant, reconnaissance variant, command variant, uh, motor variant uh, into uh, the future. You can have also the ambulance variant and we also have the um, recovery variant. The vehicle can be up armored to meet operational requirements and threats in theater. As you would see with this one, it has double skin because it is meant to can be able to sustain and survive uh, attacks from various weapons. The vehicle will also survive a 50 kilogram IED from a side, and a vehicle can take a mine from any of its wheel or the bottom of the vehicle and the crew will survive. Okay, so uh, the vehicle is a uh, MRAP class. Uh, is it fulfill uh, NATO STANAC uh, standards? The vehicle is now uh, protected to STANAC level 2A and B as per NATO standard, uh, standardization. Okay. Uh, as the most MRAP class uh, vehicles, uh, it's not uh, actually quite a modular construction because uh, of the strength of the, of the, of the, of the body, but uh, we see many systems like uh, a weapon, ses uh, weapon station, uh, UAV uh, station, and some uh, other radio communication. Is it difficult to adapt uh, the vehicle to accommodate those systems? Yes. We are the original equipment manufacturer of the vehicle, so it is easy for us to take a decision to can, uh, change the configuration of the vehicle to meet operational requirements. As I said, we've got various uh, uh, or a number of variants uh, for the vehicle. Not all of them have to have the same level of protection. Mm -hmm. So we have the freedom and the engineering capability to make sure that we configure the vehicle to protection levels that are required by a client. And how this vehicle uh, could uh, ride through the rough terrain? The vehicle, man, it drives, it drives better than a Mercedes. You uh, would see that we've taken the vehicle through a number of tests because where we come from in Africa, the terrain is a very punishing terrain. So yes. we test vehicles there when it can survive the South African or the African terrain, it will survive anywhere in the world. But of course, but in Europe you've got a slightly different climate, uh, maybe more rivers, uh, such kind of obstacles. Uh, uh, are you planning to fit, I don't know, maybe engine tailors for the European clients or such kind of systems to fulfill European uh, standards? The, uh, engine options and transmissions that we choose would, would comply and fulfill the requirements of those environments. Of course, you would have very severe cold temperatures where the roads could also be slippery, but we will fit the relevant tires that will make sure that you can still operate with those vehicles. And we have designed our vehicles so that they can uh, operate in the two extremes of the weather spectrum. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.